Hello Grumpies. So I woke up this morning and saw the news that Boris Johnson has stood down as an MP. Uh, my initial thoughts, this is the revenge of the Remainers who never forgave him for Brexit. Boris has been exterminated by the Euro Daleks of the establishment. Boris may have got Brexit done, but now Brexit has done for him. It's times like this that I really miss uh, my mate Paul from the Sanctuary of Speech. Uh, if he was still around, this would be the perfect opportunity to go live later on tonight uh, and have a chat about it. I'm tempted to, um, to try and see if I can set that up. That might be fun. Uh, anyway, Boris is Britain's Trump. Uh, not in terms of, of policy, but in terms of charisma. He's got that political stardust uh, that makes the difference between a leader and a manager. In British politics, we tend to alternate between leaders like Thatcher and Blair and Boris a leader, someone who can inspire uh, people, and managers, the bland, boring bank manager types, like Keir Bloody Starmer. The, the most successful politicians, if you look back, are the charismatic ones, the political heavyweights who have that Heineken-like ability to reach voters that other politicians can't, uh, even if they are Marmite. And you either love them or you loathe them. So with Boris standing down, uh, the Westminster Commentariat will be dedicating hours of airtime and thousands of words to Boris's downfall. They'll be delighted because now they've got something to talk about for the next fortnight. They'll be doing loads of profiles and commentary on it in print and online. And I suppose the fact that Grumpy feels the need to comment on it too is is testament to Boris's ability to do a Trump and generate headlines and get votes. Am I the only one who, who sees the spooky similarities between what the Americans are doing to Trump and what our lot have done to Boris? Britain had an empire. America was a colony of that empire and then we mismanaged that colony and then they rebelled. And then when Britain sacrificed itself militarily and economically for the fight against the Nazis, America stood up to the plate and took over. So what really connects us isn't being divided by a common language, as they say. It's a shared history of being in charge. But the problem is, today, neither the UK or the US is a democracy. It looks like it's a democracy. But... You only have to look at what's happened since 2016, and it's not. It's a sham. So in the States, the Uniparty are in charge, and democracy is an illusion. The FBI have been weaponized, and they're out to get Trump for everything and anything they can, because they're terrified of him. In Britain, the blob are in charge, and democracy is a sham just as it's an illusion in America. The, the Uniparty's political witch hunt against Donald Trump for the high crime and misdemeanor of not playing along with the military-industrial-pharmaceutical complex game plan continues. They've just indicted him again, and they will find any excuse to bring him down and take him out. The Euro blob on this side of the pond, they never forgave Boris for choosing to side with the Leave campaign, which gave the Brexit vote the boost that it needed to win the referendum. Not to say that it would have done without him, but it was certainly a contributory factor, and the establishment never forgave him for that. Both Trump and Boris, it has to be said, have been guilty of unforced errors, but both of them have been brought down by an establishment that is determined to exterminate anyone who gets in the way of its globalist agenda. Boris broke the deadlock in Parliament, a Parliament that was determined to stop Brexit and fuck the will of the people, who cares about them? Democracy's fine, so long as it delivers the result the establishment wants. 
which is the rule of thumb in both London and Edinburgh. You only have to look at the fucking SNP to see the truth of that. From the moment Brexit got... Brexit never got done. It got sort of done. Uh, Boris was a marked man. And his enemies on both sides of the house uh, were, like the Uniparty in the States, waiting for any excuse uh, to bring him down. And if they couldn't find a political reason to bring him down, then, like Trump, they just cook something up. And so the blob has triumphed and Boris has stood down as an MP, jumping before he was pushed. Uh, a Prime Minister with an 80 seat majority, with the red wall turning blue for the first and now the last time, has been ousted by the Euro blob and replaced with WEF goon Fishy Sunak. So next up, it's the election, where Keir Starmer becomes Prime Minister. I don't think there's any doubt that that's going to happen. It's just going to be a question of how big or how small a majority is he going to have. And Keir Starmer as Prime Minister is what Klaus Schwab, the Davros from Davos, that's what he wants. The pandemic served its purpose, taking both Trump and Boris off the political chessboard. So what happens next? Well, first there's going to be two by-elections, one for Nadine Dorries and one for Boris. As a loyal Boris Easter, uh, Dorries, Boris clearly told Dorries that Marxist harpy Harriet Harman intended to knife him, and that's why she stood down. We all wondered what this significant piece of information was that, that made her stand down. Now we know Boris told her that they were going to knife him. And that's why she stood down as an MP, not because she didn't get booted upstairs to the House of Lords. So there are going to be two by-elections, one for Boris, one for Dorries. Uh, Sunak will lose both of those by-elections, and Dorries will use her talk TV show to stick the boot in. Uh, she might even get the exclusive interview with Boris uh, that he shouldn't give to Laura Spoonsberg of BBC Pravda. Uh, elsewhere, Ian Dale and Jackie Smith, they'll rake over the coals on their For The Many podcast. Uh, Guto Harry will probably record an extra episode of Unprecedented in celebration. Over on LBC, Andrew Marr and James O'Brien will be unable to hide their delight, and the Today programme on Radio 4 will lead the Labour Party celebrations. Uh, over at GB News, the newly knighted Sir Jacob Rees-Mogg uh, we'll put the alternate point of view and Nigel Farage will be breathing a sigh of relief that he doesn't have to give up his gig on the telly. But in the midst of all that commentary and analysis about downfall of Boris, nobody will be paying attention to what's happening in those blue wall seats in the north of England. The ones that voted for Brexit, at least in part, maybe not entirely, but at least in part, because of Boris. And now that the Euro blob have taken him out, well, we can only hope that they vote Reform UK instead and use Richard Tice to kick the establishment in the nuts. In terms of speculation, well, the least likely outcome, I think, is that Boris joins Reform. He'll probably sit out the next election uh, and spend the five years of Keir Starmer being Prime Minister sniping from the sidelines. Uh, he'll make some speeches, he'll rake in some of the cash that he needs to keep carrying the kids. Uh, and then both he and Dorries will publish their memoirs, though he'll obviously get a much higher advance for his than hers. And by the time Starmer has made things even worse than they are now, come the election after the next one in 2029, Boris might stand again, but by that time Penny Mordaunt will be leader of the Conservative Party, because Fishy Sunak will stand down when he loses to Starmer, and Sunak losing to Starmer is Davros's game plan. Unless you're a complete Marxist Mingmong, you know what's just happened. Unless you're paying more attention to the voyeuristic distraction of fucking Love Island, that is. Democracy is dead. Democracy is dead. Our parliamentary system is corrupt, and the message of all this is that voting for what you believe in is a complete waste of fucking time. Because no matter who you vote for, the government always gets in. <laughs>